Hi, in this session I'm going to show you how to create a dynamic chart where you can uncheck or check a box to show different parts of the chart. So for example, let's say we have a chart that shows product A and product B. These are maybe the quantity sales and there is a line chart. This is a combination chart, but there's a line chart included that shows the profits. And let's say I don't want to show the profits. Let's say I don't want to show the profits. I can check uncheck that box and the profit line disappears or maybe I just want to see product A's chart and I just uncheck product B and all I see is product A or maybe I just want to see product B and all I see is product B so I'll show you how to create this basically this part here is a control form and this dynamic chart is powered by another table behind here and this table has some if statements that point back to this chart. So let me show you how this is created. Let me first go ahead and copy the data from this table. Let me do a control C to copy. Go to this sheet and press control V to paste. And what I'm also going to do is copy this table, make a duplicate copy here because I need two tables. This is the source table and this is the referencing table. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to build my chart first just to have it there. I'm going to insert a column chart and I'm going to insert a stacked 2D stack column chart. Now it's going to show everything under one column and what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate and also it also pulled the year here. So I'm just going to do a little bit of modification. I'm going to go under layout, oops, go under, oops, go under, go under design and go under select data and have to change a couple things. First, I don't the year is not going to be part of the legend series. It's going to be the category axis. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. So right now the year is gone, right? So in the horizontal category axis, that's this is where I'm going to put the year. So I'm going to click edit and the axis label, oops, I covered up my table here. Let me go ahead and click cancel click cancel and kind of move the table out a little bit so I can see this table. So go, I'll go back into select data and under edit I'm going to select the range of the axis labels. I want to see year 2000 to 2010 down here. So I'm going to go ahead and select this range. Click OK. You can see now it's there. I also didn't want to have the year as a legend series so I'm going to go ahead and click and remove that. All right, now I just have my three series here and I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now I want to have my profits, this purple one, not as part of the stack column, but as a line chart. So I'll go ahead and click that and I'll click on change chart type and make it into a line. Select the line, click OK, and now you see it's part of a line. So what I'm going to do is kind of just move this off to the side here and bring this back. So the next thing I want to do is I just want to create some create a an area here I would call it a helper row where when I select those check boxes it's going to show the values here. So this will be check box. And the reason why I put it up here is it just it just makes it if I go back it just makes it easier to view it. So the check box for product A you'll see the value when I check and uncheck it and you see the value for B and profits, right? So let me go ahead and just move this over here. And I'm going to go ahead and create the checkboxes. So to go to ch create the checkboxes, you have to go under the Developer tab. So under the Developer tab, it's under the Controls group, and go to Insert. So I want to insert a checkbox. I want to insert three checkboxes. So I'm just going to draw one here, and then insert another one. You can you can insert any size when you really think about it because you can adjust it later and go ahead and insert another one here. So for each of these checkboxes I'm going to give it a name. Oops. So it, when you, you left click it it's going to check it. If you right click it you can start to change some of the format. So I'm going to go in here under format control. I'm going to have it link to this is going to be the first checkbox. I'm going to check link it to product A. So I'm going to link it to this cell here, this empty cell. So once I check or uncheck the box, the value will show up there. So when you check the box, it'll give you a value of true. If you uncheck it, it gives you a value of false. Basically, 
a 1 and a 0. So I'm click OK. You can see here if I, if I click outside and I check it, you'll see that it shows true. And if I uncheck it, it'll show false. So I want to do the same for these two checkboxes. But first, let me give this checkbox a name. I'm going to go and right click it to edit it. And I'll just go edit text. Let me delete this. And we'll call it product A. All right, click outside. You see product A. So I'll do the same thing for checkbox two. I'll left click, excuse me, right click, go into format control. And under the cell link, I'm going to go right here. OK, click OK. And then left click, edit text. And let's delete this and call it product B. And then do the same for checkbox three. Right click, format control, and go to the cell link and link over here, D2. Click OK, whoops, and then right click, edit, and we will call this one profits. All right, so if I, now I'm going to test this out. Check there, it shows true. Uncheck it, it shows false. Profits, it shows true. Uncheck it, it shows false. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to create some if statements here. So basically, in this value up here, I'm going to say, use the if statement. If this value, open parentheses, if that value is true, so what it's, what it's going to do is, and I would, I'll do a absolute value, make sure that it's, it's always stuck there. If that value is true, which it is right now, then with the true value, I'm going to have this input. Now, if it's not true, then I want it to have non-applicable. And so that's, let me do in control enter. You can see now that 2044 is there. So if I uncheck that and that's going to turn false, it's going to bring an NA. What an NA does is it doesn't chart it. So what's going to happen is it will not chart that value. It won't chart anything if it's NA. So let me go ahead and bring this down here. Let me go ahead and grab that fill handle and drag it down. Or I can just double click it and bring it down. I'll show you in the next example. And I'm going to do the same here for this one. So I'm going to say here, right here, if C2, press F4 to bring put that into absolute value, the dollar signs in front of the C and the 2. If that is true or false, basically if it's true, then give me this value. If it's not true, NA. And press Control Enter. You can see now since it's false, it's going to bring an NA. I'll go ahead and double click the fill handle, and it brings it down. If I check on product B, you can see it's true, and then values come over. Let me go ahead and do the same for profits now. So the same thing, if an if statement, if this is true, let me go and press F4 to give that an absolute value, dollar signs in front of the D and the 2. If that's true, then bring over this value. If it's not true, then NA. All right, press Control Enter and double click to bring it down. All right, so now let me just go ahead and move this chart back up here to hide it. And so now you can see that only product B is selected. That's the only one true. And you can see product B is the only one charted. If I select the rest, you'll start to notice that it gets charted now. Now what I can do is I can just do some additional formatting. Let's say that I want this all to be grouped together. I can go under Developer, Insert, and Insert a Group Box just to make them all grouped together. Uh, basically, this works a little bit more for radio buttons, which I'll show in another video. But in here, it will look nice and neat. And you can just um, look and see how it uh, it just kind of groups them visually. So you can get some nice appeal to it. I'll just call this a selection. All right. And let's say if you had these a little bit off-centered and you're trying to like move them uh, a little bit and they're a little bit hard to center. What you can do is you can uh, right click each one of them and you go under format, go under align. What I want to do is middle align these, align them all up in the middle. And so now it's all aligned nice and neat and I've got my little dynamic chart. So I can go ahead and select product A, product B. If I just want the profits, it will show that. Oh, one more thing. With the profits, maybe I have that. I want to have that on a different axis. So, so what product A and product B, we're looking at volume, right? And then profits, we're looking at dollars. So one thing to consider is putting that on a different axis. So maybe on there, when I click on that and right click it, go into Format Data Series, 
and we want to have we want to have that on a secondary axis. So you see the secondary axis show up now, and that's one key concept of a combination chart when you're combining uh, different uh, when you're combining different uh, chart types, and you want to have one chart have one reference one axis and another chart type reference another axis. That's one thing to keep in mind when you're creating a chart like this, a combination chart. So there's an example of how to create a dynamic chart with checkboxes. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos from me, click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and leave a comment below. I'd like to hear from you and hope to see the feedback. Also, do you think others might benefit from this video? If so, click the share text below. YouTube will automatically provide a shortened link to this video and give you options to share on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and other social networking sites. Again, thanks for watching.